Dear scholars, let me glad to give you a warm welcome to everyone to this session. Myself, Dr. Saravanan, Associate Professor, Department of Library and Information Science, Samamli University. This is the sequel of the Research and Publication Ethics course lecture content. In this sequel, you are going to observe publication misconduct related issues. The FFP, namely falsification, fabrication, and plagiarism. As a research scholar, you must be aware of the issues related to FFP. So, as you can stay away from these kind of issues. You must be aware of the do's and don'ts in research. Otherwise, it will take you to any one of the wrong path that may spoil your research and it will collapse everything in your career. Let me explain everything one by one. Just uh, want you to recap the EGC notification regarding the research and the publication ethics pre course work. It is mandatory for everyone who are doing research in the universities across our country. You must complete your research and publication ethics course where uh, to complete many contents. You can observe it from your syllabus which is available in the online. Just download it and go through the content and coverage of the RPE coursework. Better we recap the experts opinion about the quality of research in our country. Professor S. K. Josi expressed his opinion like this, the economy is growing well, but our strength in scientific research is on a decline. The university system in India must undergo reforms and concentrate on quality teaching and research activities. See, many experts feel the same. The count is in a satisfactory level. I mean, the publication counts, whether it is a science or social science or any faculty. Researchers are contributing more in numbers. But when it comes to the quality of the research, it is questionable. See the information flashed by the Financial Express in the year 2020. India has just 57 researchers in the list of top 10,000 global rank. China has 404 years in the tab with the number of 5000. So, it clearly indicates where actually we are in the research. It says the research is poor, government needs to place a lot of emphasis on sound scientific research. When it comes to the laboratory based research, quality plays the major role. So, when you do your research, you must be aware the necessity of the quality in research. You should not focus on the completion of your research and submission of the thesis, getting YOOs. These things are not mandatory. Of course, your aim is to get doctorate. But various factors need to be considered before you complete your doctorate degree. Let me explain. FFP. So, it refers the falsification, fabrication, plagiarism. So, what is falsification? The standard definition, you can find it from any source. If you manipulate your research work, if you falsify your data, if you falsify your research outcomes, if you do any 
unwanted activities in your results changing the data omitting the data or modifying the results whatever it is such that the research is not accurately represented in the research record because if you flex your research to fulfill your expectations it comes under the falsification particularly in the laboratory based experiment the falsification always spoil the quality of the results of course it would be difficult to trace but the editorial board members and the reviewers the thesis evaluators if they are able to trace this the consequences will be very worse you will never imagine what will come to your doorsteps just observe the contents carefully see how to avoid the falsification see whatever the analysis you do whether it's a scientific research or social science research whatever it is your data the graphs and the results you extracted from your study need to be rendered as it is you should not try to change anything the reasons are so many it will help you to justify your work in future in case if you face any ffp related issues just observe the sample data it is the cross tabulation indicates the metal pieces versus hardness when you analyze these data the output will be like this actually this is the actual value you extracted using the statistical analysis the value probability value clearly indicates that there is no significance exist in this data that means the null hypothesis need to be accepted in your results but the researcher of course who are doing the research in this area want to modify the results to fulfill their expectations so what they simply do they change the probability values manually and they got the result like this this value is a falsified results the red highlighted background tells you the actual results is modified the p value has been reduced in order to reject the null hypothesis in your results so the significant test helps you whether to accept or reject the null hypothesis the first one the actual value what the researcher extracted from the analysis was null hypothesis should be accepted but the falsifying case made the researcher to manipulate the data they flexed it that's why they can bring the significance difference among the variables the metal pieces versus hardness they want to show there is some difference exist so they flex the result they make falsifying result now this way they can conclude that there is significant difference exist among the variables so the null hypothesis is rejected the alternative one is accepted so this is referred as a falsification now this is an example from the cross tabulation onwards the researchers are flexing the data they are manipulating the data for their convenience when they are not able to extract the expected outcome from the laboratory research or any other research they just app this kind of falsification method so this is a wrong one and you should not get involve yourself in this kind of activity because nowadays the reviewers and the evaluators are strong 
chances, the 95 percent chances are there to trace the falsification in your results. The rest 5 percent is probability. As I said, it would be difficult to find whether uh, the researcher has made the falsification or not. But many evaluator and reviewers in the editorial, the editorial team, they are verifying the raw data, analyzed data and everything because they have the rights to insist the researcher to submit all the documents. You must be ready to submit whatever the items demanded by the evaluator, reviewers, etc. So, please stay away from this kind of activities. This is the sample data extracted from the math lab. Actually, this is the original data set because whenever you may be uh, they ask the editorial board or reviewer, the evaluator ask you to submit the original data set of your results, it will help you to justify your research outcomes in case if any FFP issues arise. This is the original data, this not only MATLAB, whatever the package analysis package you use, the statistical applications you use, you must keep the original data set for future reference. This is the script related to MATLAB. You know very well who are uh, familiar in the MATLAB, they need to keep all the files related to your analysis and the results obtained for these data. So, this will help you to justify your results as I said in case if any problems arise because these are all supporting documents do not forget these are the supporting evidences for your results work. This is another application or called as OpenStat. See the ANOVA output is displayed. Uh, do not forget every package has its own unique use style to produce the output. All the packages, they, the output result analysis results will be the same, but the design and the presentation pattern they have opted is completely different from you can compare it from each and every one certainly you can find the differences here it shows the significance the ANOVA value clearly indicates the alternative hypothesis can be accepted null hypothesis is rejected if you change the value in the table because many research scholars are thinking if you change the data manually, how uh, one would come to know about this? It is not the case. As I said, they may ask you to submit your original data. If they conduct any analysis, they repeat the analysis using the same application, that time your mask will be teared out. So, you should not try to manipulate the data. Just to copy the table, paste it in your thesis and changing the data for satisfying the framed hypothesis and objectives. This is not the way of doing the research in the right way. You should think about the research ethics. The research ethics, of course, it is a tough one to follow. You must be very careful. If you are loyal, you can follow the research ethics. So, the consequences, the impact need to be realized when you do such kind of activities. The falsification, fabrication, plagiarism related activities when you do, you must be aware of the consequences. At any one of the time, it will come back to your doorstep. That time, definitely you want to, you will not be like this because it is a embarrassing situation. It may lead to cancel your award. Do not forget. Possibilities are there, chances are there. You should not think once you received the degree, once we got published our papers, 
the uh, process are over, no problems will come. It is not like that. Because whether it is a UGC or the general editorial board, the institution, they have their own rights to cancel the degree and retract the papers from the journal if you found guilty. If you get involved in any FFP related activities in your papers and the thesis. So, just to keep this thing in your mind. Try to render the original results. That is the results. You have no rights to flux the results. You should not think whatever you expect should be reflected in the results. It is not the results. This is an another application, UNESCO's popular statistical package named as WinIDMS. This is the same, the ANOVA output. See, compare the previous application output. Every package has its own unique style. The difference you can observe. Because this way you can prove we have followed the research ethics in our thesis or any journal articles. Because when you use the packages and their structured outputs, they will help you to justify. They cannot simply blame you, you have copied the output from some other thesis because definitely it will vary. This is an application Tanagra. The output of the Tanagra application will be like this. See, in my research always I am using the same output, whatever the package I use, I do not like to modify or change any of the output. The results need to be rendered. It is a credit to the package developers. See, of course, there, uh, these packages are all available at the free of cost. For educational purpose, you can use it at the free of cost. However, the proper credit needs to be given to the developers. They have spent their money, energy and time to build those applications. But how a researcher can simply alter the output and they pick up some data, they use it in their results. No credit to the developers. These are all referred as the plagiarism falsification and fabrications. This is the open state package output. See the probability value clearly indicates there is no significant exist. That means you can accept the null hypothesis alternative hypothesis needs to be rejected. So, if you frame the hypothesis like this, these values help us to prove it. But as I said, if when you try to modify this value, the problems will be started. So, do not do these activities. This is the post application. This is the data entry sheet how the data has been entered just to observe it and ANOVA model data has been entered. The purpose of maintaining this file in your desk is as I said, when the problem comes you will be asked to, to submit all the data. Then they will help you to prove your work is an authenticated legitimate work. This way you can secure your results. This is the graph generated using the past. If the researcher flex this graph using any third party editing tools, nowadays so many online editing tools are available to modify the graph. This always leads the plagiarism, falsification and the fabrications. The fabricated items always spoil the results, since specific the scientific results. 
this is the graph, it should be rendered as it is. The option you can find all the statistical packages, they are providing the option to save the image. The format whatever provided in the package need to be followed. Because these are all evidences, I have used this package for my results. I have generated the results using this application. This way you can convince the editorial board of the journal or reviewer or the evaluator of your thesis, whoever maybe and whatever the work it is. See, this is the permission actually whatever the package I use, I am having the habit of getting permission from the developer. This is the way of giving proper credit to the developer. You should not think since these packages are available in the online, they are available at the free of cost, we can use it. Of course, you are permitted to use it for educational purpose. However, it is one of the ethics. You must contact the developer and you should get the permission for using this application. See, this is the permission I, uh, I have got actually. Um, it was in the year 2011. Like that in many other application, whatever I have used for my research related activities, I have got the permission from the package developer. They are all of course the free of cost available in online. But since we are far from the location, you should not think there is no need to give the proper credit to them. Remember giving proper credit help you to save your work and stay away from the plagiarism and other FFP related issues. See, this is the permission given by the open state developer. Like that, all the applications I have the permission. Let us see what is fabrication, just making up your data or results. You actually the results you have not conducted it in your results. Falsification is different, you analyzed the data, you are changing the values. But in fabrication you are artificially creating the data and the results, everything you have created artificially. When the reviewers and the evaluators are not bothering your original data and the result there will be no problem. But if they started to ask you to submit these things then the problems will be arised. Your fabricated data will not give the exact results. So, do not get in yourself in fabricate related activities. This is the output of MATLAB. If you fabricate this graph, when you are asked to submit the original data set, definitely you won't because artificially you have created this. If you created this using the MATLAB, definitely you should have data in your table. So, this is the difference. The fabricated activities will not have the actual and original data. Whatever the data you submit related to the fabricated graph will be definitely traced. Do not think you can escape from the fabricated activities. So, the original things need to be submitted. Then the backup is very important. You should have it on your desk. See, the red arrow highlights the fabricated images. The fabricated images is clearly displayed on the screen. See, the red rectangle indicates how the same thing has been fabricated. These are totally wrong. If you do this, definitely it will be traced.
this is the original data set of of Tanagra application. Of course, this is also a free version. If you actually collected the data and you have entered it in the application in the standard format, your data set will be like this in social science. If it is a laboratory based research, if depending on the application the data set will differ. For example, instant, for instance, I have explored the Tanagra data set. Already you have observed the data set from the past application. As I said, they will help you to justify your research activities that they are genuine. So, now come to the plagiarism. What is plagiarism? The appropriation of another person ideas, process, results or words with giving appropriate credits. See, if you give the proper credits, the plagiarism will not be erased. When you omit the credits, then plagiarism issue will start. Stealing others ideas is a crime. Yes. Because one's hard work should not be wasted. By giving proper credit, we are acknowledging them. That is way we can safeguard our results. It is like as a stealing others money, one kind of stealing. So, whatever it is, it may be their ideas or any kind of process, others research findings, others research conclusions, everything. If you pick up these things from others work without giving proper credentials, then they will be categorized under plagiarism. And the plagiarism related lecture content is available in our university website. You just go through it to know more about the plagiarism. Let me show some cases observed under the plagiarism. In Netherlands, the Utrecht University have faced some issues. It has been discussed by J. Boss in his book, The Research Ethics for Students in Social Sciences. A suspected plagiarism reported in Utrecht University is given below. The plagiarism detection software revealed the following similarities between the papers of two undergraduate students. These are the similarities observed when two students submit the papers in Utrecht University, Netherlands. The plagiarism detector observed these things. The titles are identical. 66 percent is matched in the second sentence. The quotations are identical. A match of between 66 and 77 percent in the following three sentences and 100 percent match found in one sentence, 82 percent match in the subsequent sentences and 90 percent in the main question is found matched and four more sentences paraphrasing another source with the 100 percent match between the two papers and nearly 75 to 100 percent many more matches also have been traced. In the conclusion part, the two sentences are found with the 70 to 80 percent match. So, these are all the observations done by the plagiarism detection software in Netherlands. Now, the case 1. There are two students. They have submitted the paper. The similarity were traced up to 29 percent. So, what are the consequences they have faced? The board of examiners, the research and publication ethics board, they inquired the students. The student one first inquired by the 
board of examiners. The student expressed everything. He clearly said that the work was genuine. He showed the researcher showed the evidences. The supporting evidence were submitted by the student one. So the board analyzed everything. And the student said he shared his, the work with the friend. I mean the student two got the work from the student one for preparing the papers. Now you can understand when we refer some work automatically the plagiarism rate will be increased. The student two was found with the guilty. So the actions were initiated by the board examiners. The student two was removed from the coursework for one year. This is the consequences. So the student one was not found guilty because he the student submitted all the evidences and supporting documents for the results. So the board of examiners traced who plagiarized the work. So based on the evidences the student two was punished. This is case one. Let me see the case two. In this case two students are found with the plagiarism issue the similarity was 49 percent. The plagiarism reduction software traced to 49 percent similarity in the two paper of these students. So when the enquiry was initiated they traced the board of examiners traced that both the students collaboratively worked in this paper. They said the students they shared the documents through the Facebook. When they work in this paper the document and all the details they have shared it through the Facebook. They were supposed to prepare the paper individually. But they have made a collaboration to draft the paper that was the reason behind the 49 percent similarity. So in this case they were not treated as a guilty because of the collaboration work. So they were excused by the board of examiners no actions were initiated by the university. However, they were instructed to resubmit the paper individually. Collaborations were not permitted. Collaborative authors were permitted. You can act as a co-author of your paper. If you want to submit any journal article or conference paper, collaborative authors are permitted. But the collaborative work and submit it in two format, it will show the similarity. Yeah, this kind of problems will be arised. So in this case they were excused and as I said they were instructed to resubmit the paper separately. This is another case. Let me see the case 3. In this case a junior researcher copied the senior researcher conference paper and submitted it to it after a year. So the similarities was traced. The problem was the junior researcher did not give proper credential to the senior researcher. That was the reason for the plagiarism issue. So the acknowledgement, whenever you refer some other sources, you must acknowledge the author name, whoever it is. So he found guilty, junior researcher found guilty. So the paper was removed the actions were initiated against the junior researcher. You can refer any other papers using the online resource or any printed sources. But do not forget how to cite each and every one in your paper. 
when you refer others work you should not forget to quote the verb details. The citation is very important to secure your activities, research activities. Many research scholars are not aware of this. Simply they are copying the others work and including in their research, definitely it will bring a big issue in your career. The fourth case, of course this is the appropriation demands, simply it is named as priority disputes. In the history of science this kind of priority disputes often occur. One author typically accuses another of stealing their previously published ideas or discoveries, claiming priority over the idea in dispute. This is referred as a priority disputes. Let me explain how the priority disputes occurred in various places. Just observe the two experts. It was 1895. It is the psychoanalysis founder. Sigmund Freud, a psychologist, and another one is the Fliss, the ANT expert, German otolorigonalist. The Fliss and Sigmund Freud, they were actually friends. Fliss developed one research idea in his specialization. Because both of them are friend, Fliss shared his research idea with Freud. This is actually happened. Observe this figure carefully, how the priority disputes can be erased. So, Fliss developed a, a concept, the original ideas in his area and the idea he was discussed with by Bliss with Freud. He shared his research concepts. What are the techniques he developed? Everything was discussed by Fliss with Sigmund Freud. But the Fliss did not publish the idea. That means he originated the idea, but it was not published. So, the unpublished information, the unpublished research ideas were shared by Fliss with his friend Sigmund Freud. So, what happens? See the next one. Hermann Swoboda, a psychologist, friend of Sigmund Freud. So, when Freud met with the Hermann Swoboda, he shared Fliss ideas with Swoboda. With this idea, Swoboda developed the cancer and he published this research in the year 1903. So, it was published in a book format. The same idea was shared by Swoboda to his friend Otto Weniger. He is a philosopher. Otto Weniger was a philosopher. After one year, I mean in the year 1904, Otto Weniger published a book where the same ideas have been discussed. It is one of the point among other discussions. But just think about the origin where it was started. Actually the idea was developed by Fliss. He shared it with the Freud. Freud shared with his friend Svoboda. Using this concept Svoboda published a book in the year 1903. And the same idea transferred to Vinegar because Otto Vinegar was a friend of Hermann Svoboda. So, one year later, 
ഓട്ടോ വീനിക്ക് ബബ്ലിസ്റ്റ് എബു വിത്ത് ദ സെയിം ഐഡിയാസ് ഇൻ ദർ നയൻറ്റീൻ നാട്ട് ഫോർ ഫിലീസ് കെം ടു നോ അബൌട്ട് ദീസ് ആൻഡ് ഹി റിയലൈസ് ദാറ്റ് ദീ വേർ ഹിസ് ഒറിജിനൽ ഐഡിയാസ് സോ ഇൻ ദർ നയൻറ്റീൻ നാട്ട് ഫോർ ഹി റോട്ട് എ ലെറ്റർ ടു ഫ്രൂഡ് ആൻഡ് ആസ്ക് ഹിം ടു ഗിവ് എൻ എക്സ്പ്ലനേഷൻ ഹൗ ഹിസ് ഐഡിയ വാസ് ഡിസ്ട്രിബ്യൂട്ടഡ് fruit admitted yes i discussed your ideas with herman soboda but didn't give any detailed information he said like that but the answers didn't convince the fleas it was an argument in those period the history uh, in history it was a debate because in those period what were the supporting evidences nowadays you have technology and everything you have the evidences for your research activities but in the last decade of 19th century there were no records fleece said it was my original idea but it was transferred through their friends like this this is coming under the priority disputes often in scientific area you can find one is originating the idea the idea is in the air not recorded simultaneously the same concept is originated by someone expert this is coming under the priority disputes but it needs to be convinced when the issues are raised the author of the original ideas should have supporting evidences to justify that these are all their ideas they should have it otherwise these problems will be raised see the consequences how the idea has been transferred from one person to another person see the case 5 this is some flash in the student thesis so a guide trees to many flash in the thesis so the guide instructed the student to fix the flash actually the strategies j boss in his book uh, suggested this the first strategy tells the student will ask a fellow student to identify the weakness in the thesis because the guide instructed the student to fix these things so within a short period these errors need to be fixed so there are three strategies available as said by j boss the first one is to ask our fellow student to identify the weakness the second strategy the student will ask to look at the thesis of two friends who have already finished to see what they did different they already completed the work, the work was completed by some other students if they refer it they can tell what the difference exists in between these two works this is the strategy 2 in the strategy 3 pay and use the services of professional agency so he says three strategy which is legitimate which one is suitable you must select it let us see this uh, j boss observations so in the first strategy is legitimate the ask the friend to identify the weakness in the thesis in the strategy 2 this is also accepted two friends to look after the thesis this is also accepted but the third one pay and use the professional agency you should not do it the fop issues will be arised because of these activities this is the place actually where the falsification fabrication and plagiarism starts so do not approach the commercial places for preparing your research activity how you will maintain the quality you can complete your target but regarding the quality first recollect the first two slides 
the previous slides. The newspapers and the professional experts they have expressed their views about the quality of the results. But if you approach the strategy 3, definitely there is no way to maintain the quality in the results. Definitely it will spoil everything. But in the first two strategy 2, I am not convinced. My opinion differs here. Research is confidential one. If you share your research to your friend or the fellow, whatever they may be, definitely chances are there for leaking the data. Remember the fruit and fleece, the priority disputes case. He may be trusted friend, he may be close to you, he or she. But when it comes to the research, the secrecy need to be maintained. It must be between you and your research supervisor. If you share the research ideas, the research concept with any one of your friends, definitely the disputes will be arised. The falsification or plagiarism related issues definitely will be arised. You must try to solve this with the guidance of the supervisor. Consult your guide, not with the other persons. See, these are all some of the objects you should not plagiarize. Of course, they can't be plagiarized. The research findings, phrases, the entire text, charts, illustrations, including photographs, scans and figures, lecture notes and PowerPoint slides, lecture summaries and exams. These items should not be plagiarized. Some expressions, they need to be properly acknowledged. You must give proper citation. See, the paradigm shift by Damascus School, survival of the fittest, Charles Darwin, unintended consequences, Robert K. Matt. These are their words. Simply they are two words or three words. You do not have any rights to include it in your research work without acknowledging them. So, do not think the lengthy definitions and the paragraphs only need proper citation. If you use these kind of terms without proper acknowledgement, then it will be plagiarized by the plagiarism application. So, researcher usually you can find it in two categories A and B. The falsification, fabrication, plagiarism issues stand in front of these kind of researchers always. Type A researcher, always they want to do falsified research, fabricated research, plagiarism research. They know what will happen. However, they want to get involved in these kind of activities. This is one kind. And another kind. They do not want to get involved in these kind of activities. They want to maintain quality. They want to be loyal in their results. So, in my view, these two types, the researchers who want to do the research in a right way, the researchers who want to do the research, whatever it costs may be. So, whether A or B, you must have your own policies. In the A type, you can further narrow it into two, intentional or unintentional. Because some researcher, in my experience I have observed, unintentionally they get involved in these kind of activities. They do not know, for example, giving proper citation to the particular author. When they quote others definitions, when they paraphrase the sentences, how to render it? When provide the citation, what are the uh, style unique the citation styles need to be followed. So, some researchers are not aware of this, these are all coming under the unintentional category. But the first one intentional is deliberately they know everything, but however they are not bothering about the consequences. They just want to get the degree. 
So, these kind of researchers spoil the quality of the results definitely they will not help to keep the quality of results in their subject discipline whatever it concerned. But you must be aware of the UGC regulations. UGC has clearly given the regulations regarding the plagiarism. There are four levels. The level 0 indicates the similarities up to 10 percent plagiarism. The level 1 shows the plagiarism about 10 percent to 40 percent. The level 2 indicates the similarities above 40 percent to 60 percent. If the plagiarism level goes above 60 percent, it is categorized as level 4. What are the penalties for this level? You should be aware of it. For level 0, if the similarity is false below 10 percent, they are treated as a minor similarity, then no penalty. You are permitted to submit your research. If it falls between 10 percent to 40 percent, you will be asked to submit the revised document with the time period not exceeding 6 months. The level 2, if the similarities falls between 40 percent to 60 percent, you will be deferred from submitting the script for the period of 1 year you can do any research activities. Then similarities above 60 percent, your registration will get cancelled. See, you, above 60 percent similarities is available in your thesis, it is not original results, automatically it will be cancelled. So, this is the highest penalty. You must be aware, the, as a research scholar, you should know the UGC regulations in our country. All universities and the colleges, wherever the researchers do the research, should adhere to these regulations. In case, if you have already obtained the degree, you should not think, already I have explained it. Even after a decade, UGC has the rights to pull back the degree. It can cancel any of the degree in case the plagiarism issues arise. If plagiarism is proved on a date later than the date of award of degree or credit as the case may be, then his or her degree or credit shall be put in abeyance for a period recommended by the institutional academic integrity panel and approved by the head of the institution they have their own rights. UGC reserves the right to remove difficult or difficulties in the course of implementation of these regulations in consultation with the government of India, Ministry of Human Resource Development. So, often uh, the notifications revised by the UGC as a research scholars, you must watch the UGC website and our DARE in our university, they are regularly giving the UGC notifications. You must watch it and update yourself about the regulations. In our university website, you can find all regulations. It clearly gives complete details about the plagiarism and the falsification fabrication related guidelines. So, as you know, when you submit your synopsis, you need to publish these papers in the UGC listed care or the international accepted databases. If you visit the prospectors, you can find under various classes, the regulations have been clearly explained. So, the class 22 tells about the cancellation of registration. 26 shows the act of plagiarism. The repository of thesis is clearly explained under the class 27. In 28, you can find the ethical and legal requirements. The research ethics has been provided under the class 29. In class 30, you can find the research misconduct details and the investigation of research misconduct is also provided in the class 31. Just 
you should know the consequences simply it is uh, refers to attractions when you are found guilty uh, if you have get involved yourself in the falsification fabrication plagiarism issue usually the attraction activities will be taken by the editorial board of the journal uh, let me explain and show some examples about the retraction so what is retraction so in academic publishing a retraction is the action by which a published paper in an academic journal is removed from the journal so once you the you found that guilty your paper will be removed from the journal the clear notification will be provided by the editorial board if it is a printed uh, either it printed or online they will post it so see everyone will know about the retraction and what is the reason behind the retractions so online journal typically remove the retracted article from online access for printed issue they will send the circulars and other notifications this is usually happens and happening still now it is happening in all subject disciplines for ffp related issues so these are the consequences just observe the picture what do you feel will the wise person do like this cutting the branch of tree by sitting at the edge of the branch is not a good idea so he should know what will happen otherwise this will happen in your research when you do ffp activities let me show some retractions in the engineering discipline an engineering research paper was retracted because he the research repeatedly published their own work in multiple journals so this was the reason for retraction second case such publication has retracted 37 articles from an engineering journal a single retraction notice lists the links of 37 papers to be retracted from proceedings in the institution of mechanical engineers part e the journal of process mechanical engineering the reason behind the retraction was third party involvement in paper preparation the authors didn't show their original contribution there was no original work the third party involvement was the reason it was traced by the review board so you should not think you can falsify or fabricate the data and getting their paper published by paying the money see if you pay money to publish your paper will not be retracted it will be on there but the journals those who want to maintain the quality in the research sector they have their own principles and policies they will not let the authors to do falsification or fabrication or plagiarism related activities the third the work of a chemical engineer in the china university had come under scrutiny in bappir and several articles received expression of concern before ultimately filing the retraction see this is one kind of retraction activity sage retracted 10 papers published as part of two special collections in advances in mechanical engineering the reasons were notified by the editorial board the technical errors and the content the articles did not meet the journal's required standard of scientific validity these were the reasons noted by the editorial board of advances in mechanical engineering and case fifth a researcher in south korea has lost 30 papers he has also been fired from his university position see understand the consequences the reasons duplication and plagiarism see whether it's intentional or unintentional the researcher one knows himself how do we know they know themselves but the real consequences will be like this an engineering researcher five papers were retracted in istanbul reason plagiarism an engineering phd scholar in south korea and a professor the co-authors five papers have been retracted from different journals material science and engineering seoul national university south korea 
reason figure duplication the manipulation and fraudulent date these are the reasons for retractions next case journals have retracted five papers of material researcher after concluding the peer review process had been fake yeah these things are also happening the fake peer review A renewable energy researcher who recycled material in several papers has lost 11 papers. See, the same thing has been recycled and it has been published in different papers. This is one kind of plagiarism. Another case, a mistake cost three papers of a PhD candidate. Author copied some parts from papers that had copied from others without proper credential, simply they are copying and repeating it in various publishers. And recent study indicates the retractions rate in the engineering field. If you access this article, you can get more information about the retraction. A study on the web of science database. This article is published in the Tyler Francis online. Just to go through it, if you are belonging to engineering discipline, not only engineering, any discipline, this paper may help you to get more awareness about the retraction activities. Suppose if you do the FFP related activities, what will happen to our research work and to us? You must be aware. The results traced by the authors have been explored here. The study assessed the retraction of scientific articles in engineering journals. Approach from the year 1945 to 2015 covered by the web of science. Nearly 117 journals were covered in this study and nearly author analyzed 238 retractions published by those journals. The reasons behind the retraction was unethical research. So the researcher should keep this thing in the mind. How the FOP related activities impact their research in future. Let me show some retraction related outline. Just observe the picture. What do you think? Is it wise or foolish? Cutting the branches by sitting at its edge is not a wise activity. If you do FFP related activities, definitely this will cause more damage in your career. The subject microbiology related retractions you are going to observe. The consequences when we do the FFP related activities in research, this will be like this. A researcher's paper was retracted by Applied and Environmental Microbiology Journal in the year 2011 because of the FFP, Zoology, the reason for retraction of this paper was the usage of restricted data from the Ministry of Agriculture of China. See when the researcher collect the data they must take care of the restriction related uh, more details, whether the data have been secured by the government, whether they can collect these data, whether they can use it for their research purpose, they should be aware of this. Without aware of the restriction, the limitations, if they use the data in their research, these are the consequences they have to face it. Entomology discipline retractions. The Brazilian forensic entomology faces at least three retractions for plagiarism. New traffical entomology retracted nearly three papers for FOP activities. Retractions in physics discipline. If you see this, you will wonder, after 30 years, 
the paper was retracted by the Canadian Journal of Physics. Actually, it was published uh, during the year 1990. By saying the reason feminism, this paper was retracted. So, there is total time limitations. You should be aware of this. Journal editorial board has its own rights. If they trace FFP related activities in your paper, it can be retracted at any time without time limitation. So, this paper was retracted by Journal of Thermophysics and Heat Transfer. The journal stated as it was believed that the results were questionable and could not be relied upon. They were not ready to accept the findings and conclusions. The outcomes need to be acceptable. You need to justify the enough evidences are missed. In scientific research, you know, the laboratory based evidences are very important to prove your research outcomes. Botany discipline related retractions. The reasons for retraction was 11 images had been manipulated in the papers. So, the manipulation in scientific research is one of the bigger threats, it is the biggest threat. Since we have the technological features on our desk, it does not mean that you can manipulate any image and you can flex your research findings. You should not do this kind of activities in your research, else this will be the consequence. The figures related irregularities and inappropriate data handling was the reason for retracting this paper. See, there are various figures have been inappropriately presented. The authors of the above article are retracting it from plan physiology following an investigation into concerns of the origin and assembly of several figures. After the publication, some authors re realized that they have committed some mistakes. So, the voluntarily came forward to inform these things to the editorial board and based on that the papers were retracted. They follow the ethics, it, it, you should understand. When you commit some errors, you must ready to accept it. Mathematics discipline. A mathematician ranked as Clarivet, highly cited researcher, as third paper retracted. It means the paper was highly cited by many researchers. However, by the FFP grounds, it has been retracted. The pharmacy subject retractions. A group of drug researcher has lost a pair of 2020 papers. Actually, it was published in the year 2020 for the lack of reproducibility and other problems. This was the reason for retraction of the paper in this discipline. Nearly three papers have been retracted because he duplicated other articles. The articles were duplicated by the researcher. That was the reason behind its retraction. The retractions in the discipline psychology. See, after its publication, nearly after two years, yes. A psychology researcher the other hand was found guilty and the paper was retracted. It often happens when you are not sure about the research ethics. The reasons stated by the journal was research misconduct including manipulating data etc. Same psychology discipline. This paper was retracted nearly decades old article. The reason was unethical, scientifically flawed and based on racist ideas and agenda. 
So, when it goes against the editorial policies, it will be retracted. Of course, it may take some time, but the actions will be initiated by the editorial board as and when required. After 6 months following publication in Psychological Science Journal, a research paper by Northwestern University psychology researcher was retracted. The reason was research methods adapted. The research method adopted by the researcher in this research was not acceptable. That was the reason for its retraction. The retractions in economics discipline. American Economic Review retracted this paper due to the several inconsistencies in the studies code uh, because the readers of this paper submitted the comments to the journal based on that it went again through the review board based on their recommendations, it was retracted. A highly cited economic paper too was retracted. The reason stated by the journal as the authors and editorial team are retracting this article because the original findings cannot be replicated likely as a result of an inadvertent coding error. While the original codes and data sets are no longer available, new analysis with a markedly similar data set does not support the original results. So, you should try to understand the reasons behind the retractions. At any cost, the findings cannot be replicated. Business Ethics Quarterly and added an editorial notice as famous Harvard economist reused parts of 2002 paper multiple times. So, it was one of the reason for its retractions. Some other retractions. This is very important for the research scholar. The researcher loses PhD after investigation finds he faked data. It means the degree was awarded to the scholar. However, after some period they traced the fake data. So, the FFP was traced, it was the result for yet final the researcher has lost the PhD degree. This too can happen, it happens everywhere. This is another incident. The researcher was suspended for faking the data from the institution. And another plagiarism related activities initiated by the institution. This was happened in Australia, Swinburne University. It fired the researcher for research misconduct. The Journal of Steroid Biochemistry and Molecular Biology has retracted a pair of articles authored by three Japanese researchers. So, these are all some sample that gives you an idea about the FOP related consequences. You should not think these are the only subjects fall under the retraction activities. You know, almost all the disciplines you can find the retraction because when the researchers uh, do not follow the research ethics, automatically they fall in the FFP related issues. The guidelines provided by various review, the editorial boards, the reviewers, evaluators will help the researchers to stay away from these activities. For example, the Global Journal of Engineering Research gives uh, the proper guidelines to secure your research from the FFP. So, the falsification, fabrication and plagiarism 
activities can be controlled when you are aware of these guidelines because it is intentional or inten unintentional already i have explained this the researcher may get involved in this activities without unintentional so if you want to uh, gain more awareness the guidelines of the journal portals need to be accessed almost you can find all the journals of various disciplines are providing this is the research ethics you must have it in your mind the researchers who are committed to adhering to research ethics will never interfere with others work because their concentration is to focus on discovering new thoughts new ideas the originality need to be developed by the researchers and completing the allotted task rather than wasting time plagiarizing others contributions if you are not able to originate the ideas so the next to that flash in the researcher mind was to plagiarize others work so this kind of activities need to be stopped right now in another sense another perspective you can see it as a self discipline already i have explained to you you must be loyal to your research if you are loyal to your research the ethics can be easily maintained it will not be tough for every action you know the reaction is there when you do the plagiarism related activities it will come back to your doorstep do not forget this law and one more thing the computer technology is like as a double edged sword you know how to handle the double edged sword if you are not sure definitely you will cut your hand with the help of the technology you are doing the ffp activities in your research but do not forget the same technology is used by the editorial board viewers evaluators of your research work to trace the plagiarism in your research so whatever you copy you download using this technology can be simultaneously downloaded copied by some other researcher from somewhere so you should not think you are only copying and transferring the data or falsifying the data or fake the data so the simultaneous things always happen you should not forget it technology help us to access more data nowadays since we live in the digital era it help us to access unlimited resources it doesn't mean that you have the rights to copy and transfer it in your research work it gives some ideas you should recollect the mark twain's quotes everything needs to be created you must develop your own ideas for which you can refer these resources you know what do you mean by the review of literatures like that you must review these sources for developing your knowledge something new and some new concepts need to be invented in your research if you use these resources you should not forget the citation related resources how to cite how to quote how to paraphrase so everything needs to be followed with the proper rules and regulations the citation techniques you must be aware otherwise the plagiarism detecting applications like urgund and tanit whatever your institution use will trace the plagiarism the similarities will be traced it will raise if the percentage of similarities in your research so do not get in this kind of activities as i said fop is just like as a boomerang when you throw the boomerang it will come back to you 
philosophical thoughts, the philosophical codes cannot be realized until you face in your life. When you face, definitely the consequences will be worse than you imagine. So, you must stay away from falsification, fabrication and plagiarism. Do not think about these things even in your dreams. Get proper guidelines from your supervisor and narrow down your results. Use the reviews, the supported study materials, resources, whatever with proper acknowledgement. That means, the proper references and the citing techniques need to be followed by the researchers. If you want to be an excellent researcher, this is the time to make your choice. Your decision should be right one, it should not be wrong one. Make your choice. More lecture contents are available in this link. If you access, you can get more information. The resources used in the presentation are solely for educational purpose and have been properly cited. I owe my sincere thanks to the authorities for having granted this opportunity to deliver a lecture. Hope this may help you. I wish you all the best. Thank you very much.